stopping by. I uh, want to talk briefly about the importance of copper on your immune system. Copper is really, really important. And as a matter of fact, it works in tandem with zinc, just like salt and potassium, calcium and vitamin D. However, one of the problems is if you're taking a lot of vitamin C and zinc, it will deplete the copper. It's kind of like if you work out and you sweat a lot, you need to, or if you have a fever, you need to replace those electrolytes. Copper helps with your uh, skin uh, tone it, it, to make collagen, to make your skin, uh, to make collagen in your skin, you need copper and vitamin C, but C can kind of flush out the copper, so you, you don't want to take the C with the copper. You want to take the copper separately from zinc, too. Uh, it's kind of like you don't want to take iodine when you take calcium. You don't want to take certain things. Copper also helps your body to absorb iron. And a lot of the deficiencies, if a person's deficient in copper, it looks like... A B12 deficiency. How does a doctor know you're low on copper? They're actually now even looking into copper for Alzheimer's disease. So to recap, to uh, help your skin, to help your uh, brain, your mind, and to help your clotting, proper clotting, you need uh, copper. A lot of people think of vitamin K for, for uh, clotting factors as a nutrient, but copper is also very important. Now, there are uh, quite a few scholarly articles on how the immune system needs copper to function properly. And people don't usually think about copper when they think about building up immunity. But they have done studies and they've found that um, it's just it's just not um, going to uh, work right. Let's go look at the National Institutes of Health uh, on copper, NIH copper. Um, okay, so health professional fact sheet. And here's another thing about the copper. If you're going to get, this is a complete fact sheet. I've looked this over quite a few times before getting on here. And um, again, this is just going to recap what I said. I, I put it in a nutshell. But one of the things about this virus that happens to be going around is it's it's seeming to affect the endothelial cells inside of the blood and copper helps fortify a lot of different things and you know they've been saying some people have uh, reactions even to the vaccine because they're not uh, they're not really sure why but it's a very small percentage but you know the big thing here is making sure that you know what what your body needs and making sure you have enough nutrients. So I'm going to put this link below if you want to look into this a little bit more. And um, I would say I, I was reading an article on copper and the kind of copper you take and the amount are also important. And too much copper can also be very uh, uh, unhealthful. So that that's the, the big thing about it, you know, now, of course, at the top of here, they say kind of meat to take, uh, but I, I'm i vegan, and I get enough copper from cashews. And why would you want 1,378% of the daily value? Your body is not going to be able to store that. And the thing is, look, if you have too much copper at once, it's not good. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of different... Uh, things uh, that could cause you to need it. For example, if you have celiac disease, Menke's disease, 
or you're taking high doses of zinc. And by the way, your body can absorb zinc through creams. Uh, people that take dentures, I think um, I was reading an article saying that sometimes people have copper deficiencies from the gel or whatever it is they use for the dentures. I don't know. I don't know if it's a denture or partial, but um, so again, in a nutshell, if you want to be healthy and um, look, it, don't leave no stone unturned, right? And if you do think you might need a supplement. I would go ahead and take a kind that's bioavailable and um, oh by the way in here they were saying that it helps with blood pressure cardiovascular disease um, inflammation they said it might it might might excuse me so Here's the health risks from excessive copper, though. See, so you don't want to take too much. It could cause liver damage, gastrointestinal symptoms. It says it's very rare, though, to have copper toxicity in healthy individuals who do not have hereditary copper homeostasis defect. However, copper, copper toxicity has been reported. I think there's this Wilson's, yeah, here it is, Wilson's disease. So this is a rare disease caused by a mutation on a gene, ATP7B. Now, um, due to that, that their body not being able to uh, remove uh, the copper from the cells, they have really severe problems. There's also, you know, other diseases uh, with other minerals. Uh, I think it's hemochromatosis. You have too much heme or iron. So it could cause a big problem. So know what your body needs and what your uh, physical health needs. So again, it's a very important mineral, but some people can't take uh, extra min minerals. they got to avoid food with copper in it. Soy has copper. Um, lots of nuts have copper. Some grains. but And this particular article, uh, Nutritional Supplement Educational Center, I don't know, I found this one. And um, so basically with Without small amounts of copper circulating in the blood or body, iron can't be absorbed from the intestinal tract and released from its storage sites. So basically, it's important for nerve health, collagen, elastin, blood, vessels, joints, and in the healing process. And it's also important to support the immune system. Your immune system needs enough protein. It needs enough uh, zinc, obviously C. C is very important. When you're under stress, you need more C. And there was, but the problem is when you take each nutrient, too much, if you take the zinc a lot, you're going to deplete. If you take a lot of zinc and a lot of C, you're going to deplete the copper, and then you might have a deficiency. Um, so... Also, if your hair is going gray prematurely, maybe you need copper. Um, so, high blood pressure is a, uh, a, a link to copper deficiency. And high cholesterol, copper deficiency. There's a lot of different signs uh, of copper deficiency, but they overlap with a lot of other sicknesses. Like I said, B12 might look like it. So that's it. The long and short of it, maybe you might want to look into copper. It's very important, you know, uh, diseases that cause inflammation and hemorrhaging, uh, of course, would need uh, vitamin K and copper. So 
looking into all of this, the best thing for you to do is talk with your medical practitioner and perhaps a registered dietetic nutrition, uh, somebody who's studied nutrition, on what might be right for you in your particular health circumstances. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day and try to stay healthy. Love you lots. Thanks for listening. Bye.